or a five minute presentation. Um, some dictionary, not important which one, uh, defines bluffing as to deter or frighten by pretense or show of force. I define bluffing as convincing someone, any of you, that something, whatever it is, is possible. Bluffing is not lying. <laughs> it's not, it really isn't. You can't lie a whole lot. It's also not going into a situation unprepared. If I were to walk up here and not know a thing about bluffing, none of you would believe me. Know something, although you can't put it off until the last minute. <laughs> <clears throat> there are two hard fast rules to bluffing. One of them is that you need confidence wherever you can get it. I happen to get confidence from uh, getting a pedicure. Uh, getting laid, or uh, wearing some really sexy panties. I'm wearing the burgundy ones. <laughs> Can you see why I left that intentionally blank? They're very comfortable, though, by the way. <laughs> the other hard and fast rule is that you cannot lie. When we lie, we get in over our heads. It means that we don't know what we're talking about. If you lie too much, you could wind up lying to billions of people getting us involved in a war that we don't need to be in in the first place, and we really don't need that to happen. Again. <laughs> so you need to learn to lead the conversation. When all else fails, you just need to talk about something that you know about. If you're leading the conversation, it's something that you're comfortable with, other people are going to feel comfortable, and they're going to believe what you're telling them, hopefully. When you can't lead the conversation, you need to ask good questions, intelligent questions, or just a question that someone's going to want to answer because people like to be right and they like to know things just as much as you do. It also gives you a chance to uh, learn more about the person you're trying to bluff and that's important. If they say something that you don't know, admit it. But not all of it, just admit enough to make them feel comfortable and then you can learn more. You don't have to know everything unless it's your job to know something. <laughs> also know who you can count on. When I switched over to WordPress uh, a couple months ago, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, and so I asked my Twitter friends and asked the people I met at WordCamp, and I got through it. I bluffed my way through the entire thing. I had no idea what was going on. I looked at my community. When I did this presentation, I looked at the community as well. I asked my parents, I asked my husband, I asked my friends and family what to put on these slides. <laughs> I had no idea. This would be very bland right now if it weren't for Flickr and my friends on Flickr. And uh, Mark Coleman, hi Mark. This is a photo of Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cameras were not allowed at this concert, but Mark uh, snuck his camera in a lens in one sock and the camera body in the other sock to get these photographs. <laughs> and then when he went to the next, um, uh, the next concert, he, he bluffed his way backstage, talked to the manager, showed them the photos, and because of that risk, he got to shoot them for their 25th anniversary. <laughs> way back machine and think historically. This is George Washington. Uh, how many of you know he's our first president? <laughs> he was the first president and he didn't have any idea what he was doing because he was the first president. The kings before George Washington, he bluffed his way through and made America what it is in part. So that we could like this man, Barack Obama. I'm not going to talk much about him. I'm just going to tell you that my daddy took this picture and that I actually put the slide in before he was elected, because that was kind of a bluff on my part. <laughs> um, when all is well, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I think I can get 20 seconds out of 15, 15 seconds out of this slide. I'll just wait. But that's my best friend. Can she have a lovely smile? <laughs> always, always be prepared to have your bluff called. I submitted this presentation late at night. I had no idea what I wanted to present on. <laughs> And imagine my surprise when I got the email telling me I needed to have my 20 slides ready. Uh, yeah. You always need to know when to stop. With this presentation, I have five minutes, I have 20 slides, and then you will. You're rid of me. But in life, you need to find a stopping point. You need to know when enough is enough. It's true in art and politics and life and work and childbearing. Uh, and then have an exit strategy. Because this is like my second to last slide, I feel comfortable telling you that I have a very good friend of the audience. He was prepared to uh, pull the fire alarm for me. <laughs> and if this didn't go well, I was going to have all of you run screaming from the building and I could maintain dignity. <laughs> last but not least, always remember your manners. When you're bluffing, you want to make people feel good about themselves. And sometimes making someone feel good about themselves is just as simple as saying please and thank you. Woo!